Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm unfortunately going to get a little technical today. Um, going to be covering uh, some uh, WordPress packages, some fantastic WordPress packages, and where to find them. Um, so let me share my screen. And... Everybody see my screen now? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, so we've got fantastic WordPress packages and where to find them. Uh, it's basically how to use uh, the uh, in, uh, how to use WordPress scripts and other NPM packages in your WordPress project. And that could be if you're doing a uh, development for a plugin or a theme. Uh, I think they'll mostly be helpful with the uh, uh, plugins, but you can use them in themes if you want. So here's what we're going to cover today um, is where to find the official WordPress NPM packages. Uh, does anybody here not know what NPM stands for? what it stands for but i don't that's about all i know about it i'm sorry i'm sorry what would you say uh, that's about all i know about it is node package manager right yeah yeah other, so than, that, other than that it's, yeah you so, can go over the basics that's great okay well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show kind of uh, what it is, and and uh, I'm gonna go through kind of the entire uh, installation process. Um, anyway, so here's uh, we're gonna also show how to use uh, the scripts for your build process. Basically, uh, if you're doing any sort of JavaScript development uh, for putting your JavaScript together, um, and why you may not need this, and then maybe why you might want to use it. Uh, then we're also going to go over some other tools that are packed with these scripts. And then we'll also look at uh, using uh, another package called Element for uh, integrating React with your JavaScript. Uh, we're going to go over how to use another package called API Fetch for fetching uh, data. Okay, so where to find the official WordPress NPM packages? So, what's going on? Sorry, my printer started going nuts. Um, so there's two uh, places you want to go. Uh, the If you go to developer.wordpress.org, and search for uh, the uh, package reference guide. I'm just going to click on it so you can see what it looks like. It's basically over here on the left side has a list of all the different packages that are available. And some of them have pretty good documentation, and then some of them don't. But if you ever get bored and you're trying to fall, fall asleep, uh, this is a good place to go uh, because you'll be you'll be knocked out in in 30 minutes or or you'll find something very interesting that uh, you might want to use. Um, then also you can go to NPM uh, itself and there you'll be able to see a, a lot of the packages. Um, and so here's one that we're actually going to show how to use. If I click on uh, WordPress fetch, it tells me how to install the package, uh, whether it's a, a dependency or just a development dependency, and then also a little bit of information of how to use it. Uh, and then there was this the great article that came out uh, a couple weeks ago or maybe a couple of days ago, and it explains 
how uh, how the how Webpack and WordPress packages, the thing that I'm going to talk about, interact. And um, well, but if uh, if you go to developer.wordpress.org, they've actually got a blog now, and it's now out of beta. Um, and I'm going to be sharing this uh, 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 slideshow presentation uh, as a file. I'll, I'll just throw it on meetup.com, and and then you can download it from there if you if you want these links. Okay, so uh, the first thing is um, using WordPress scripts for your build process. And the first question uh, you might have is, do I need a build process? No, you don't need a build process, at least not always. Um, and here's why you may not need a build process. Uh, if you're just creating a basic plugin, that maybe just uses PHP for everything. You're not really doing any JavaScript at all. You probably don't don't need a uh, a, a JavaScript uh, build process. Um, you don't need a build process for creating an admin menu uh, or for enqueuing a file um, or for just using uh, JavaScript for simple DOM manipulation. Okay. So I, I've got here, if I just get to, so I have this little demo here that is nothing exciting. Uh, what, I, what I've done is I've made a, a simple little plugin uh, called Fantastic Packages. If I deactivate it, you'll see what it looks like normally. And then I'm going to activate it. And it uh, it just basically puts in a an admin page. It's got a little uh, turkey drumstick or something like that. And then it's got this uh, text saying uh, plugin JavaScript is, is loaded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over here to the code. Can everybody see this? You need need it larger. No, not now. I'm talking to my dog. Um. Hey, you keep it up, and I'll make you present. And it might do a better job than me. Okay, so uh, what I have here is uh, basically a plugin. Um. And let me just show you what these hide the files real quick. Um, what I've got here is something where it uh, it uh, loads in the admin page, which is this, and all it's doing is it's spitting out um, the admin uh, page title. That's what's showing up right here. And then it has um, an empty div with the ID of app. Uh, so this part right here, this plugin JavaScript is loaded. That's not showing up anywhere on, um, on this, uh, in this file. Uh, down here, I've got the uh, function for adding the menu page. Um, if you want to, look this up. You can go to developer.wordpress.org and uh, just search for this function, uh, add menu page, and it'll tell you what to do. And then down here, um, I've got a, a function for just enqueuing the assets. And the way that this works is that it detects if I am on, if I have this particular uh, plugin uh, page selected, you know, not something else, say like general settings or, you know, one of these other other pages, but just this one, uh, the fantastic packages, uh, what it will do is it, it will enqueue this JavaScript. 
And so the JavaScript that I'm in queuing is right here. And so after the uh, after the DOM loads, it then runs this function. Um, and basically the function is very simple. All it does is it just targets this particular div uh, with the ID of app and then sets the text for uh, plugin JavaScript is loaded. And that's real simple. And in this case, you don't need a, uh, a build process at all. Uh, you could you could get by just fine. In fact, I've seen um, I I've actually not seen too many people use uh, the WordPress scripts uh, for uh, plugin development, which is kind of why I wanted to show everybody how to do this. Anybody have any questions so far? If you do have any questions, actually, if you could just leave them in the chat and then we will get to them. Uh, we'll get to them later. Okay, so let me get back to my wonderful PowerPoint presentation. Oh, sorry, my keynote presentation. <laughs> okay, I already went, went through this. So you don't need uh, a build process to do any of this stuff. And if you wanted to, uh, you could go to uh, the uh, GitHub repo. And what I've got is a branch that basically shows you what it looks like uh, before actually install, uh, setting up a build process. OK, when might you want a build process? OK, you might want a build process if you're do, creating more uh, complex DOM manipulation using a framework like React. Um, and you may not like React, or you might be more familiar with something like Angular or Vue or Svelte or, you know, you name it, Ember. Um, but this is just kind of give you an idea. It's like if you wanted to use a framework like React or any framework, uh, this is where you you probably will need a build process of some sort, even if you don't go with this method. Um, if you want a, a simple configuration for bundling, um, one of the things about Webpack is that uh, depending on what you're using it for, it can get pretty complicated in trying to configure. Um, and uh, I'm not going to get into all of that, but uh, if you if you go to the uh, Webpack's documentation, you can see for yourself it's pretty complicated. Um, if you want to use TypeScript for your project, uh, that's something that requires some extra configuration if you're using uh, Webpack. Uh, but if you use the WordPress uh, sorry the WordPress scripts, um, it Basically, all you have to do is just create the TypeScript file, and um, it will work. And then also, if you want to run automated unit tests, uh, they they have uh, built in to script. They're using the the Jest uh, API for running unit tests, and I'm going to give you just a real simple example of how that looks. And then. Um, Lastly, if you're writing a lot of JavaScript that's longer than 100 lines and you want to be able to break the code up into separate files, so you'll probably want a, a, a build process to where you can have like, uh, like one function or one component per file rather than having to uh, have all these uh, files together, or not all these files, all these functions together in, in one file. Uh, last, sorry, lastly now, um, you want to use the JavaScript libraries that come with WordPress, uh, sample being React, so it won't make your plugin size larger. Um, that one blog, that, that one, sorry, my dog is barking. He knows that I'm presenting and, and decided to ruin it for me. Um, 
What was I talking about? Oh, okay. Uh, that one blog uh, that uh, I showed uh, earlier on uh, developer.wordpress.org, uh, I think it's Ryan Welcher goes over uh, how how the the WordPress scripts uh, Webpack configuration uh, will will make it so that when you bundled your JavaScript and say you're using React or some other library that comes with WordPress, uh, it it's configured so that it will use the the version that comes with WordPress so that you don't have to uh, import it separately, um, and so that they'll you know, make your your plugin size smaller. Okay, and then here's a, a, a famous quote. Uh, I delight in thinking of ways to configure Webpack while driving my cool Prius. Because uh, that's, if you've had to configure Webpack, you, you'll probably get it. If you haven't, uh, you don't want to do it. Um, I know Vite is becoming really popular. And uh, who knows, maybe down, I, in fact, I, I would expect that down the road, um, they might change uh, the WordPress scripts to where it's using Beat uh, for bundling instead of Webpack. I, I don't know, though. Okay. I can't remember where. All right. So um, the first thing you want to do is if you're going to use WordPress scripts, uh, you want to make sure that you've initialized your NPM package. Let me just go through these bullet points, and then I'm going to get right back to the code. Uh, you need to install WordPress scripts. Uh, you need to add, build, and start tasks to your package scripts. Uh, you run the build process uh, to create dependency files. Uh, then you <clears> update <throat> your queue function so that it points to uh, both the bundled JavaScript and the assets file. And so I've got an example uh, right here. And this is basically the uh, the branch of after the build process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, switch uh, over to it right here in VS Code. Okay. All right, so... Uh, Let's take a look at what we got here. Um, I think I said uh, what I need to do is make sure that I had uh, WordPress scripts installed and I did, but if I didn't, I would basically go down here and do npm install WordPress scripts uh, because it's only done, uh, because it's only a dev dependency and have the uh, say dev flag. And then I've got another uh, dependency here. Uh, this is another uh, WordPress uh, package uh, that 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 basically uh, what it does is I can get to my stupid index. Okay. So remember I had the where it said uh, window dot uh, uh, the the add event listener right right here. Now I can just use this function that I'm importing from uh, WordPress and just wrap the add message in there. Okay. Um, the one one thing though is. Uh, let me show you what happens if I try loading this right now. Okay, so it's not going to load the JavaScript. And if I inspect the element, I can see in here I have this warning message uh, about uh, assets file not being loaded. And that's something that I've actually put into the uh, plugin uh, file itself. So Coming back here to the code, not a whole lot has changed, except if I go down here, the, the main thing that's changed is this function for enqueuing the assets. 
Uh, now it's a, it's gotten a little bit more complicated, and let me just explain uh, how this works. Uh, what it's going to do is going to look for a file name uh, in the build folder called index.asset.php. I'm going to show you why that's important. So if it finds that file, it will enqueue uh, it will enqueue the script. And what it's going to do is that it's going to uh, pass along the dependencies and the version uh, that are coming from this asset file. Uh, but what I've done is I've wrapped it uh, in a conditional statement so that if it doesn't find that file, like in this case, <laughs> right now there is no build folder at all. That's because I haven't run the script down here where it says WP script build. If it doesn't find that file, it's going to uh, spit out a warning uh, or sorry, an error message. Uh, so this is this is basically something I just put in there. That way, if I'm um, if somebody uh, decides to pull down this this plugin uh, from GitHub and doesn't run the build script. Uh, they, they, it gives them a clue as to what's what's happening. So I'm going to run the build script right now. I'll just hit that. Hopefully everything works. Okay, there we go. So down here, it's it basically uh, using Webpack to uh, put everything together. And now we see there's a build folder. And there's actually two files. Normally, the way... Uh, if you were using a Webpack that you just you know, did it separately, it would just have the index.js uh, file. And you see how everything's like all scrunched together and stuff. Um, let me open this up. And so this asset file, what it's got in here is that it's got an array with the dependencies and so what's going to happen is that this is going to actually get passed back over here as one of the dependencies for enqueuing that JavaScript. It's a way of telling WordPress, hey, when you load or when you, in, uh, yeah, when you load this index file, you need to make sure that you've loaded this WP uh, DOM ready uh, file as well. And then it has a uh, version uh, number. And that's handy because that's kind of a way of, uh, you know, breaking cache and stuff. Uh, so anyway, so that that's how that's how that works. Now, this is probably overkill for a uh, something as simple as this. But for example, uh, before I had this add message uh, function in, in the index.js file, well, I was able to put it off in its own file. I believe that with modern JavaScript, you actually can do importing yourself, but it uh, I'm not I, I haven't tried it myself and uh, I would probably go with something like this, actually, if I was going to deploy it uh, publicly. Okay, get back to my wonderful uh, presentation. So that's kind of an example of how that works. Uh, do, David, do you want me to take a break and answer any questions? Let's see, somebody's in the chat. Okay. So, Ed's asking, uh, getting a copy of my presentation. Yes, yes. I'm going to share that um, as, as soon as I'm done. And also, I'm recording the video, so I'm going to have this on on YouTube. And then also, you can you can always just uh, take a look at the the code on GitHub, and uh, you can download it yourself, play around with it if you want. Okay, so some other tools that are packed with uh, WordPress. Uh, scripts, uh, there are tools for automated testing. Okay, so let me...
I'm going to go back to the package reference. And if you scroll all the way down to scripts, it will walk you through. This is probably the most documented of the packages that are on here. This is important. Anyway, if you scroll down, you can see all the different um, NPM tasks that are available. Uh, you've got ones for checking checking the engines. I, I can't remember even what that was. But like checking the licenses of your uh, dependencies and stuff, uh, checking the format, linting your code, uh, updating the WordPress packages. Um, the two I'm going to cover uh, right now is going to be uh, the zip uh, zipping up the plugin and then also uh, unit testing. So let me go back over here and pull up the right uh, pull up the right branch. The reason I broke this up into different branches was uh, I wanted I wanted everybody to be able to see uh, what it was like in each state. And then also, I didn't want to be trying to remember to do all of this and then uh, forget something. <clears throat> OK. All right, so uh, in this case, nothing really has changed except I have a few more uh, JavaScript files now. And if I go to uh, go to add message, you'll see that I've got something happening where I'm actually uh, uh, putting in some the I'm actually outputting some variables. So let me uh, run the build process. You can see uh, what that looks like right now. Okay, so it's saying well, JavaScript loaded, two plus two is four. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the power of JavaScript to be able to, to add numbers like that. I mean, whoa. Well, anyway, this is this is actually just to get, get give you an idea of, of a real simple thing that it can do. So I have this function called sum, and I'm importing it. And basically, it's all by itself. It's a real simple function. All it does is it just uh, sums up the, the number uh, using the uh, array reduce method. And then I have this uh, other file called sum.test.js. I open that up. And so what it's doing is that it's importing this, this function. This is the beauty of being able to have things in separate files is that I can pull this function into another file and run some tests on it. So I, I have a couple, couple of tests here um, and I have added a task uh, it, uh, for the unit tests. And so I'm gonna run it down here and you'll be able to see what happens. And there you go. It basically tells you all the uh, things that have passed. But like, you know, let's try breaking it. Let's say um, I copy this and say, let's add um, orange plus grapefruit. To equal Changelo. Orange. Fruit. fruit. Angelo. Angelo. Okay, so here, let's run run the test again. And it failed. And it tells me exactly uh, what happened. And uh, you can see that basically it was expecting Tangelo. Instead, what it did was it, it concatenated 
uh, these two values. So this is handy because now um, instead of having to use a different um, unit testing uh, uh, or or having to configure it configure uh, configure it yourself, uh, you can basically use the what comes with uh, uh, Word the WordPress scripts. Uh, let me uh, go in here and revert that or discard the change. And then there was there was another thing I was going to show. Got to go back to this and see what it is. Okay. Um, the other thing is that you can have it uh, zip uh, your your uh, plugin as well. So we have this one uh, task. It basically just plug in zip and hit that. And then it tells you everything that it's done. And it basically created a zip file right there. So if I wanted to upload this to a site, it would have everything, uh, everything from this, uh, uh, or every, everything uh, necessary to, to run it. You can also configure it if you want to exclude or only include certain files. Uh, you can go into the uh, package.json and uh, there, there'd be a, a, a files um, array. And, and so, you know, if I wanted this to say like, uh, oh, only put in the build uh, folder, um, if you are going to put uh, something on there, though, you may want to include everything. And in fact, I think that I remember reading there's a, it seems to me the requirement that they want your code to be readable. So you probably would want to put the source code in there. Uh, but it, it won't put in things like it won't put in node modules and stuff like that. Uh, all right, let's... Uh, Close that out. So, Aaron? Yeah. Uh, one quick question from Robert there. Does Node need to be running on the server? Uh, yes. Good question. Yes. Yes, you do need to have a Node running on your server in order to uh, be able to in order to be able to do this. Now, Depending on, on your setup, uh, for example, I'm using local. Uh, let, me, let me pull that up. So this is this is what I've got. I'm I'm using uh, local by uh, local WP. It used to be called local by Flywheel. I think it's now just local. Let me look this up. Yeah, it's just local. And I think that, oh, okay, server, you mean the target server, not development server? No, no, you you shouldn't need to uh, you shouldn't need it on your target server unless you unless you have to run some of these scripts, but it uh, you you probably won't be doing that. If you're say if you're doing a development for a plugin locally and once you bundle this together, uh, you should be able to uh, upload upload this. And I don't believe that it's going to, it, it's not going to have the node modules. I know that it, it basically configured to just have the files necessary for uploading a plugin. And then once it's on there, uh, your server just has to run, be able to run uh, PHP. Right. And the browser runs the JavaScript, and and there you go. So th this is all client side JavaScript, right? The server is still all pure yeah. PHP. Yeah. Yeah. This is not. Um, this is not something like uh, you know, like there are some JavaScript frameworks where they're they're doing uh, server side rendering and stuff like that. No, this has nothing nothing to do with that. This is basically. Mm -hmm. You're only um, 
you're only building JavaScript that's going to go into the plugin that you will then have on um, your, the, the your production server, and then it's just running the the uh, the JavaScript in the browser client side only. Um, but that's a good question. Yes, because uh, a lot of the frameworks, um, uh, even React, they're they're they've been integrating, you know, some more server side rendering and and uh, some things are. I'm just like, oh, I I don't know what this means. Um, I and and the main thing is like like, well, I know I can't, I I can't really do a whole lot with it because it's like I don't have node running on the server, you know, the production server. I'm I'm pretty sure of it. I mean, maybe I do, but um, uh, yeah. So let's see. It's, uh, go back over here. Okay, so we did the uh, the plugin zip task. So that would be basically if you want to just bundle this together, get it on a website, and and have it run. You'd have your PHP files. You'd have your bundled uh, JavaScript files that are ready to roll on the on client side. Okay, uh, next thing is using WordPress Element or React JS. Um, so the steps here is that you basically would uh, install WordPress Element, and what that is, it's an uh, on the WordPress documentation. It explains it. It's an abstraction layer wrapping around word uh sorry wrapping around react um and so it has some features uh some some things are not actually available in it and i don't know exactly why but the the advantage of is that instead of installing uh reactors instead of having instead of having to import it uh, yourself and either uh, bundle it in uh, with your package or perhaps in queuing it separately, uh, you're able to just use the one that React ships with. Um, on a little side note, in the last release, I believe it was, uh, what are we at, 6.2 now? Yeah. Okay, so 6.1, WordPress 6.1 shipped with React 17. Uh, 6.2 ships now with 18, but it also provides a fallback for 17. And so there's a way that I've configured uh, this example so that it can it can handle both. So that this way the plugin would be working uh, whether you're using uh, re uh, the uh, the latest version of WordPress or earlier uh, version. So mm -hmm. let me down here and we're going to check out this using react and then you know what on this uh one thing i i kind of forgot to do is that uh as i'm checking out different branches, my dependencies are, are changing. And so if I was a smart developer, I would be running NPM install um, to make sure that I've got the right uh, the right packages installed. Uh, but I, I keep forgetting to do that. Okay, so uh, in this case, again, not much has changed except I go over here and I need to uh, run my build package, uh, not build package, build task. Press this and it says, hello world. Oh boy. And you might think, well, it's the same thing as before, right? Well, actually uh, what I'm doing is now I am uh, using React to render a component. Let me show you what the component looks like. So this is the component. It's basically a greeting and uh, it's got a, uh, 
uh, a property called to, to whom, and now it's spitting out hello, and in this case, it's world. And so if I go down to uh, the index uh, JS file, so now what I'm doing is I'm importing uh, some uh, functions from uh, WordPress element. Uh, got one called create root, one called render, and one called create element. Uh, create element is basically um, if I open this right here is creating an element, but it's written in a different uh, syntax. It's Notice that the extension is JSX. Uh, if you've not used React, this might take a while to get, get used to, but um, I'm just explaining what, what this is. But uh, because this is not a JSX extension, um, I'm doing, I'm uh, creating this, this uh, this UI element uh, using the create element function. And so uh, what we got here is that uh, we've got a, a target element, which is the uh, the app, uh, the, the div that had uh, app as the ID. So if I go back, where did I have that? Okay, right here. Um, so this is basically the target element right there. And then what it's going to do is that it's going to render this particular UI element that actually has uh, the greeting component uh, in there. And down here, I've got a conditional statement. Um, and it's, it's, it's checking if create root exists, then do it this, then uh, render it this way. If not, render it this way. And basically, I, I what I should have done was I should have put some comments in there. But uh, uh, create root is for uh, React eighteen, and then this. This method is for React 17 and earlier. If you go to a lot of, I think that if you go to the, um, I don't want to be scrolling forever on this, but uh, I think if you go to the element, okay, right here. This, this the, the way that I've uh, structured this code, it's basically copying uh, almost verbatim from, from here. The main difference though is, um, see this, see this right here, this greeting function. What I've done is instead of having it like uh, the way that they've got it here, I'm instead using JSX to make it a little easier to read. And so then you end up with something where instead of using uh, just vanilla JavaScript, I'm actually using React to uh, put this together. And it's nothing, you know, it's nothing spectacular at all. Uh, but if I wanted to change this a little bit, like say strong, save it and then build. There you can see a little bit of a difference there. Is everybody wowed to death with that? Don't anybody jump out of their, their seat. Okay, so, but anyway, the, the main thing there is that you're able to use React. And so if you have experience with, with React, you, you, might, you might find that cool. It's like, oh, 
cool. I can actually make admin pages using React. So I could have like a, you know, kind of a single page uh, application, or you could, you know, break it up into uh, different different pages. Um, the, I think the last thing I want to show is how to use uh, API fetch uh, for fetching data. Um, let me escape out of this. Okay, I think that's that's it. So let me go and... Okay, this is the last one. This is actually where it gets a, a little little more interesting. So if you passionately hate PHP, how does this change your life? If you hate PHP, what this means is that you could uh, essentially create a, a plugin uh, a, a single page application plugin where the whole thing is pretty much in React. Or if you don't want to use React, you can use Vue or Angular or anything of your choice. Um, I have another. Where is it? Admin style book. In fact, let me. This is something I, I'm still working on, but I have a a plugin that is basically just showing uh, styles that are baked into Word, WordPress, and this is all being uh, this is kind of a mix of PHP and React. So what I've got is some some routing uh, going on uh, up here. You see the the path. Uh, changes, but if this is basically you could create a, a user interface uh, using React without having to get into too much PHP code. Um, that's kind of the the benefit I I see to it. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, uh, but you know you might, it. Uh, Okay, I think I installed that. Let me run the build process now. Okay. All right, so now I've actually got something. This is an example of using React and API fetch for uh, uh, retrieving data. And um, I'm also using some of the WordPress components uh, that come with Gutenberg. Uh, the table, uh, this table UI is actually uh, kind of, I guess, it's a classic uh, uh, thing that that uh, it just basically just uses uh, CSS classes. Uh, but uh, these buttons right here, uh, these are React buttons. And then if I uh, refresh it, you're going to see a little... Uh, Spinner for a second there, where it says fetching posts. Uh, that's a React component as well. Um, and instead of having to create it myself, I'm able to use the one that WordPress ships with uh, Gutenberg. So if I come back over here to my code, I believe, see, in the the last several variations, like once I got, um, once I got uh, the WP scripts. Uh, running, I wasn't making any PHP code changes at all. Everything that I've been doing has been uh, using JavaScript. There is one little thing, though, is that right here, I'm enqueuing a style called WP components, and I need that in order for uh, these buttons uh, to appear correctly. Um, but that's it. That's the only uh, change I've made to uh, the PHP. Uh, what I've done in this particular branch is I cleaned up uh, some of the the files. Let me get rid of this uh, zip files. I I got rid of some of the like the that sum function. I don't need that anymore. Uh, if I go down to the index.js, it 
This is exactly the same as we had we saw earlier. Uh, it's just basically is mounting the app uh, component. Uh, or the one I showed you before it was called greeting, and now it just made it app, so it's a little more clear what it what it is. Um, so now when I get into the app, this is where it gets really heavy on the React. And uh, I'm just going to go through uh, line by line and explain uh, what these things uh, do. And if you have any questions, you can always uh, reach out to me later, you know, ask well, what the heck does that mean and so forth. So we have a, a function called API fetch. And what that is, is that's a wrapper around uh, JavaScript's uh, fetch API. Um, and then I've got the uh, elements, and then I have these components here, the button, uh, flex, which basically what it does is it's, it's a component uh, that uh, uses Flexbox for, I think in this case, I'm just using it to move the buttons over to the right. And then I've got a spinner component, which is what you see when you refresh this and you see the spinner uh, for uh, a few seconds. Then I'm, I've got a, a date function uh, from uh, WordPress date, which uh, you can use that for formatting uh, dates uh, like, like such, uh, where you're actually using kind of the way the PHP formats uh, dates. And then I'm also importing a, a function called uh, add query arguments. And what I'm able to do is uh, I'm able to uh, basically compose uh, the the URL that I'm going to use for this this edit but button. Um, and Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to want. Actually, no, no, I'm just going to stay right here. You might be wondering, where is this admin URL uh, coming from? It's a global variable that is actually being set here on the PHP file. Uh, I was wrong. There we have one more little thing. And basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm passing, I, I'm, uh, adding this inline script so that way I can access the admin URL, which is right here, the wordpress.local WP admin. Uh, I think it's admin.php, but whatever it is, um, I'm passing that over to uh, JavaScript side. Uh, that way um, I can That way I can generate uh, this this link because I can't I can't assume I know exactly where uh, the, the the admin URL uh, or I I can't assume that I know where this admin URL is. I mean, in most likelihood, it's going to be slash wp dot dash admin, but it might be something else. I know that you can, if you're installing WordPress, uh, you're doing some sort of custom installation, you are able to change that uh, folder. You could have it nested in uh, somewhere. I probably wouldn't do that, but you, you can do that. And so this is kind of a way of making sure that, um, that I know what, uh, what I'm referring to. But basically what this does is it basically just build the the, the URL for right here. So um, when I click on it, it shows me the edit. Uh, it shows me the editor. And all I'm having to do is just uh, pass the post ID. And so the, the way this app function works is uh, when, when the... Uh, when the component loads, well, sorry, when the, yeah, when the app component loads, it's going to fetch uh, 
going using the uh, REST API, and they will bring that data back. It's basically just bringing back the post, and then it uh, runs a, a function of set posts, and then uh, it spits out the information uh, down here. And you see, I've got everything in this table uh, with the where it's rendering out the uh, the post data. And I've got the post link, and then I'm using things like the post date, where I'm I'm specially formatting it. Uh, you know, if I normally the date would look something like oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Date. I'll take a look at what. So this is normally what the date would look like. And so rather than do that, I'm actually uh, using this uh, function to format it. There's actually a, a native JavaScript way of, of formatting a date, which is, um, or there's actually several ways of doing that. I was just showing the, the reason I'm using this one, just to give you an example of here's another package you can use. This is probably overkill. In fact, I I don't really need this. I don't need the date or the add uh, query arguments. I could have done that all myself, but I just wanted to show uh, what that what that looked like. And um, I think that is. I think that's it. That's basically the end. Does anybody have any questions? This is this is really interesting. I, I wasn't expecting to see this. Um, uh, WordPress is very easy to, to deploy on a on a server. Um, so this is, looks like it's an easier way for people who know how to write React to turn around and make WordPress applications. Mm -hmm. uh, th there's one more thing I want to just say about the API fetch I, I forgot to mention you can use it for um, it, it, you can use it for external APIs as well um, if you set this to URL and then point to some uh, external URL it, it will pull in uh, data from, from there as well uh, you can even uh, send uh, authentication information um, and you do, do a lot of different things. Let me go back to, there it is. Yeah, if you were to look at the documentation here, uh, you can see some of the different uh, things that you can do, do with it. Like you can uh, pass a nonce around if you need to use that for something. Anybody else have any questions, comments, complaints? So, so Aaron, what's involved in um, getting a, a plugin that actually renders in the block editor? Ah, okay. So, so that that is where you would want to. That's where you would want to actually build a block. Um, and so the probably the best place to do go for that is you go back to the uh, WordPress uh, developer resources. And it has a bunch of how-to guides. And they're really confusing because there's there's a few in here that don't really show how to create block. Let me see this. Okay, that's not the right one. Uh, and then this one's not the right one, although this is kind of an interesting... Um, <clears throat> let's see here. 
or this one. I'm trying to find the one where it's I hope they didn't move it. That's one of the problems. They they keep moving things around and is this it? Maybe this is maybe this is here. Yeah, they they had they had something el else originally that was not actually a block, and it was it was a little confusing. Hmm. Um, probably there is something called uh, create. I think it's called create. Here we go. All right, WordPress create block. I believe this is what you want to to use, and what it will do is that it will it will get you started on everything that you need in order to have a a, a block that basically you know which is generated or uh, rendered using React. And have it show up in the in the editor, and then what will happen is that it, it will make it as a separate plugin. Um, I think it would be cool for us to do that, like some someday as a demonstration. It's it's actually not too difficult. Um, yeah. Well, let me take that back. It's it's not too difficult to um, to do it if you you doing it this way but it uh it can be i don't know i i found it a little little tricky to understand mm. but yeah this is where you would want to go so you know, want to go to the uh i get the link for it it Oh, there it is. Copy link. There's a chat. Oh, there it is. Okay, that that is probably where you want to go, uh, because then you're able to use the uh, the the little. You're you're able to basically you to run uh, a command that will create everything that you need in order to make a block. Okay. Well, what I talked about uh, today, this is mostly for if you're doing some sort of plugin development and you just want to, um, you you want to use React for like admin stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's where this comes in handy.